If you're thinking of learning Portuguese from absolute zero, you might be feeling quite overwhelmed by your options. Should it be an in-person class? Can you do it yourself with books and apps? And if so, which ones? The one thing you don't want to do is waste your time trying a bunch of different things that don't actually work, leaving you exhausted and feeling like you've just been throwing spaghetti at the wall trying to make something stick. So as a Portuguese teacher who has seen it all in the last 15 years or so since I've been studying Portuguese myself, today I wanted to give you my perspective on exactly what I would do if I was starting to learn Portuguese today from absolute zero. So if you're excited for this video today, give it a like, make sure you hit subscribe if you haven't already and you need more practical Portuguese lessons in your life because that's what I do. So I'm going to talk you through five steps and the first two you actually need to do before you even think about picking up a book. It might sound strange, but trust me, if you do these two things straight away, it's going to really help you stay on track for success. These two things are writing a mission statement and finding a community. So let's break down what I mean by saying writing a mission statement. You've got to be really clear about why you are learning. This is going to be a long and difficult journey and actually taking time to do this step is what's going to really help you stay on track when things get difficult because it is going to get difficult. Ask yourself the following, why do I want to learn Portuguese? What difference is it going to make to my life? And what is success going to look and feel like? I need you to think about this, write it down so that you can go back to it whenever you start to struggle and remember why you're doing this. In a previous video I have done, I gave you a sentence to fill in the blanks and lots of you said it really helped. So here it is in case you haven't seen it. I'm learning Portuguese so I can. I will feel when I can. So an example of this would be, I'm learning Portuguese so I can make new friends when I relocate there. I will feel confident and connected when I'm able to speak to locals in my everyday life. Having a goal makes a huge difference because you're actually able to measure your progress based on how you feel and what you can do. But a quick note on goal setting. I don't want you to put down something like, I want to be fluent, for example. This is a really good long-term goal, but you don't want to wait until you're feeling fluent to actually start feeling good about making progress. So let's leave that to one side and think about more tangible, easier to reach goals when you're just getting started. So this might be something like, I want to not have to switch to English when I'm in practical situations, or I want to be able to follow conversations when my Portuguese friends are talking to each other. This is something you'll be able to achieve much more quickly, and those feel-good vibes that you get from that are what's going to keep you going and keep you progressing. So take that sentence, write it out, drop it in the comments for me, I would love to see it, and maybe even stick it somewhere where you're going to see it every day so that you can stay motivated and also stay on track when your study starts to slide. So the next step I mentioned was finding a community. Now I cannot stress enough how helpful it is to have people who will act as your cheerleaders on your good days, but also a shoulder to cry on on your bad days because there will be some bad days. Even somebody who's gonna help you stay accountable when you feel like you're struggling and you're not keeping up with your studies. Now you could do this in a number of ways. You could join an online community or you could start the same time as a friend or a partner, or you could even buddy up with somebody who has a completely different goal that they're working towards, but you can still help each other out and stay accountable to your goals. However you decide to do it, having people that you can share your wins and losses with is so, so helpful, especially in today's age where we love to get likes for our effort. This is one of the reasons why I set up the community function inside my program, Portuguese Pro. I love to see people there sharing their wins, cheering you each other on it really really helps people stay connected and focused on their goals there's more information in the description about my program if you'd like to learn more about it the third thing I would do if I was starting to learn Portuguese from scratch would be focusing on pronunciation now there's no surprise there for any of you who are familiar with the channel you know that I talk about this all the time as the foundation and the fundamental thing that you need to learn if you're getting started with Portuguese because you won't be understood and you won't understand others if you don't have a good grasp on pronunciation. Now the good news is there's only a finite number of sounds that you need to master in order to be able to speak Portuguese. And once you master them, you can say anything. 
The problem is that most teachers and courses just jump straight to grammar and they really underestimate the power of learning and perfecting pronunciation early on. And this is why so many people fail so early on because they've learned to say something, they've seen it written down, but when they say it out loud, they're still met with completely blank faces and then they feel like a failure. So focusing on pronunciation early on is what's gonna help you avoid those types of situations. I do have a free pronunciation guide that is linked in the description that talks you through the seven most difficult sounds in Portuguese. So it's a great place to start. You should definitely go and check that out. I also have tons more videos on this very channel that are gonna help you with Portuguese pronunciation. So I'll link that playlist at the end as well so that you can watch those next. Step number four, if I was learning from scratch, would be listening practice. Now, this is something that gets really neglected by people, but it is so important, especially in the early days. You are gonna be listening far more than you are gonna be speaking in the beginning, but one of the most common complaints I hear is, I can't understand a word Portuguese people say when they speak to me at normal speed. So I recently did this video where I actually talked about why this was so difficult and some really practical strategies that you can do yourself at home to get your ear tuned in to the sound of native Portuguese because I promise you it's not impossible, you just have to know the right way to break down the sounds. My main tip is to practice listening as much as possible, even when you're out and about in the street. Yes, I used to do a lot of eavesdropping in cafes when I was learning Portuguese, but honestly, this is so helpful. What you wanna do is be listening out for key words that you do know and you do understand so that you can actually start to tune your ear into recognizing these words in everyday speech. From these words that you are hearing, you can make a running list of vocabulary that you're gonna keep going back to and memorizing, but make sure that it's vocabulary that you are gonna use on a day-to-day -day basis. Words like ontem or café, rather than words like armadillo that you might learn on something like Duolingo. The fifth step is starting to take a dive into basic grammar. Now you might find it surprising that I've left grammar till last, but I genuinely would do all of these other things before I started to worry about grammar. And when I do, again, I'm only gonna focus on the stuff that I'm actually going to need to use on a day-to-day -day basis and just keep it really targeted. So when I'm learning verbs, instead of learning 100, let's learn 10 that I know that I use on a daily basis. So if I like to run, for example, I would make sure that I learn the verb correr so I know how to talk about running. Or if I have a dog, I might learn the verb pasear so I know how to talk about going for a walk with my dog. The same goes for conjugations as well. You don't need to memorize every single one straight away. Just start by learning the conjugations for the first person, yourself, so you can start to talk about yourself. And when you feel comfortable with those, you can start to expand the amount that you are learning. This really is the best way to do it because getting overwhelmed with grammar is one of the biggest mistakes I see people making and it's just not necessary. The basic building blocks for conversation and the most essential grammar that you need is also something that I cover in my free lesson for beginners. The link to register is in the description and I highly recommend you check that out if you've enjoyed this video and you're feeling really excited about getting started with Portuguese. So there you have it, my insider's take of how I would get started with Portuguese if I was starting today from zero. Please stick around on this channel because I have over a hundred videos that are going to help you if you are somebody who is looking to build their confidence and conversation skills in European Portuguese. I'll be back at the same time next week with more tips and tutorials. Ciao for now!